origin of the Greek word ethnography and it all started with this word oceanographers. So, now coming to the uh, time. So, so briefly I am just mentioning this may be for your knowledge. So, this was with the start of the oceanic expedition expeditions, first you have the classical era. So, this is from 3000 BC, 2000 AD. So, at this this time in the long time interval say 4000 years it all started in our country only with Indian traders. <coughs> taking help of monsoon current. So, this is the beginning of oceanography that mankind started using ocean currents to move ships for trade. The Indian Ocean. So, that means we were a maritime nation even at 3000 BC. So, this was the origin. So, after this there were subsequent expeditions in the classical era. The first one I am telling you is classical era. So, after this the Greeks they came. So, 300 to 400 BC they started exploring the Mediterranean. Greeks, Phoenicians, And in 1000 AD, you have Vikings. North Atlantic. So, this is your in a nutshell the advancement of ocean going. Now, here most of these expeditions involved utilization of current and at that time of course, ships were not diesel power. So, wind and current were the foremost propelling power for ships, wind and current. So, this was the classical era, after this you come to the pre challenger era. Now, challenger we will come to this challenger era, there you will find this challenger is actually the name of a ship. So, this is your pre challenger area, this is from 1498, 92 rather, 1492, yeah, 1492 AD, this uh, to 1777. And here actually a lot of discoveries were made during this era, the prime one being Columbus, 1492 AD.
So, this was in 1492 AD. Now, here uh, Columbus was given the mission of actually finding a route to the Indies, that is your East Indies, but eventually he landed in the West Coast, that is the Atlantic. Now, after this actually 1498 was Vasco da Gama. So, those of you who are interested, they can go back and read this historical advent of oceanography. There you will find a lot of expeditions and till even now people have gone to these sailing expeditions you will find. So, Vasco da Gama crosses Atlantic. This is This was discovered, Cape of Good Hope. So, this uh, 1519 you have Ferdinand Magellan. Now, he was the first man to circumnavigate the globe. <coughs> 1777, Captain Cook, Maps, New Zealand. So, this is your pre challenger era. After this, the challenger era comes. So, in the pre challenger era, you have the primary, it was the oceanic expedition. And in the challenger era, you find this is from 1832, that is, with the advancement of more and more knowledge about the oceans, scientific discoveries started during this time. And this was led by a man, gentleman, who was called Charles Darwin. You must have heard about this name, who was synonymous with the evolution of the uh, uh, evolution of the uh, human uh, race. Or so he, this Charles Darwin sailed with this ship called HMS Beagle. So, HMS means Her Majesty's, Her Majesty's Ship, that means it was sponsored by the UK government, British Navy. So, British Navy started your scientific observations. So, this is observations of marine life. So, these um, oceanic expeditions, the prime importance was to collect, of course, the, the sovereign expeditions, all these were funded by the governments of the countries and uh, the main purpose of these governments was to establish their rule in distant lands. And at the same time, of course, scientific studies were to be uh, made. So, observations of marine life. So, this was origin of life. He made lot of discoveries. Around this island, this is called Galapagos Island. Now, all these were funded by the British, the British Navy was, now the HMS is Her Majesty's ship. So, it was the British Navy coming into the picture now. So, they were trying to go to for the distant land. So, after this is you will find 18 the same challenger era is going 1872, 1876 you have Willie Thompson. So, 
so that the British at that time they were superior shipbuilders. So, all these oceanic expeditions you got to have a strong ship in order to counter all the storms or weather all the storms, good stability and others. So, the British the reason why they were able to conquer so many countries was because fundamentally they had a very strong navy. So, this is the starting point. Now, this Thompson he started his expedition in HMS Challenger <coughs> from which we derived the name this Challenger era. So, he collected vast data physical, chemical and biological aspects. So, what we find is that the previous that is in your uh, pre challenger era, the primary focus was discovery of new lands and trade that is trade was mainly carried out by the Indian rather that that time we used to be called East Indians during the coast of this uh, lot of trade was going on in around Malaysia, Indonesia and the southern part of India. So, next we find after this similarly trade was going on in the Mediterranean. Now, coming to the challenger era you have the British started venturing out for discovery of the new land that is uh, Columbus of course, I think he was uh, Portugal, Columbus, Vasco da Gama were from Portugal, Spain etcetera. So, the other countries started venturing out. The prime aim of these countries is to set their sovereign foothold in the US and West Indies. So, that was the prime aim, but eventually it started a lot of scientific expeditions in the challenger era. Now, after this that is after the challenger area where you have you have the ship that is HMS challenger venturing out. Now, after this you have the post challenger era. So, this is the chronological development of the subject of oceanography. Now, this is from the period 1893 to 1960. So, 1893 was the Arctic Ocean. by this gentleman called Nansen. So, the Norwegians have now started exploring the Arctic. So, first they previously the Vikings they are all from the Dan Danish and the Vikings were called by the people inhabiting Denmark and Norway. They started exploring because they inhabited the Arctic continent they started uh, they discovered Canada. So, they now they started more investigation into the Arctic Ocean. So, the vessel was by Fram, this was the ship. So, this was in 1893. Now, after this that means, the ships were becoming more and more uh, stronger. RV Meteor. So, in 1925 you have the research vessel called RV Meteor. Now, this was I do not know which country sponsored it, but probably it was by the Europeans. So, this 
first study of ocean floor. Ocean floor was first studied by the 1925 by R V Meteor. So, by process called eco sounding that is mankind started use of sound through the ocean. So, this was first experiment on what is called bottom profiling. Then of course, this is going on, then you have R V Dean. Indian Ocean. R V Albert Ross, Atlantic Ocean. So, that means from 1925 onwards of course, you have the powered vessels, but prior to that the 1893 mostly it was done by sailing ships which used the wind as well as the ocean currents for the propelling power. But after this mechanized vessels and more robust were coming into being and with the development of knowledge research vessels were commissioned. So, this is still the post challenger era. And the advancement of technology was still taking place after that. So, 1960, so this I have told you from 1893 to 1960, the US first designed what is called submersible. first submersible was designed. So, by this time lot of knowledge has been acquired on the functioning of submarines, but submarines at the uh, that is by 1960 already two world wars have been fought and lot of knowledge was gathered on submarine design, but submarines were unable to go to large depths say few kilometers down on the seabed. So, it has to be submersibles were to take care of that. Now, this first submersible was sent uh, to explore Mariana Trench. So, I will give you the depth this is called Mariana Trench, this is the deepest trench on the ocean floor. Now, after this you have what is the Glomar Challenger era. So, mankind was, mankind is inquisitive about what is happening below the surface of the water or surface of the sea. So, from 1960 onwards you will find when a lot of knowledge has been developed on submarine design that is the vessels started going deeper and deeper down into the ocean floor. And same time after 1960 that is around this era 1968 to 1970 what had happened was the oil shock first sent its waves across the world. That is the oil, the Arabs they formed an oil cartel because of the, the, of the South, South West Asia war you see. And because of this lot of uh, what is called uh, uh, impediments were put forward on export of oil to the developing countries. 
So, from this you will find 1968 is another development of another era of the development of shipbuilding. Prior to that you have 1960-1970s you will find small ships and people started thinking of going deeper and deeper down. But from 1960s and 70s onwards you will find the development of shipbuilding took in the larger category of vessels that is VLCCs and ULCCs were being produced. And at the same time the world was faced by an oil cartel given by these Arab countries. So, what the US started doing they invented or they built another ship which is called Gloma Challenger. So, during this period exploration for newer oil fields began with real earnest because of the energy crisis. And this was again you know as far as research is concerned the US is always the fore in the forefront and they had a good navy also. So, this Gloma Challenger was commissioned. Now, what was this Gloma Challenger? So, this is primarily a drill ship. So, the first drill ship was designed by the US. So, this was for exploration of oil. in deep sea. So, during this time crisis has hit the developed countries. So, they were hunting for oil. So, this was the global challenge era. So, after this the development was still taking place 1970s you will find lot many submersibles and drill ship were coming to being. Now, these summer cables were primarily intended for maintenance of your undersea drilling pipelines or drilling risers, your undersea offshore uh, oil installations. So, this Oh, is there so, uh, till now it is still going on and then uh, we are still in the post in the Gloma Challenger era. So, after this you will find exploration for new ocean energy. ocean energy sites. So, this is now the pre present scenario. Now, after this I will give you um, the uh, this is the short uh, the development of the period of development for oceanography. Now, coming to the bottom topography. that is the nature of the ocean floor. Now, all of you must be aware of what is happening on the surface of the sea that is the waves, the nature of the waves. So, naval architects and ocean engineers they have to be, they have to learn the mechanics of the waves, but what is happening on the ocean floor. So, and if you design all any fixed structure which has uh, foundation on the ocean floor like the drill ship or jack up etcetera. So, you have to know the ocean floor characteristics. Now, ocean floor you will find it is not never flat and stable. So, this is the first characteristic is never flat and stable.
Now, in order to gather knowledge about the ocean floor, the expedition was in the um, vessel which took that uh, research vessel R V Dane and all that this in 1925 they started finding out the nature of the ocean floor. Now, here you will find uh, first let me give you before we go into this the, the elevations of the ocean floor. So, this is best given by a histogram. So, this is the coverage of the earth, the depths of the ocean and the elevations on land. Now, uh, the highest elevation on land is what? Mount Everest, what is the height? 8840 meters. So, I will come back to this diagram later on. Now, you will find uh, this is the very surprising thing that the highest land elevation this is eight eight four zero meters. And deepest trench deepest trench we have uh, uh, is the Mariana trench I think um, here it is Mindanao and deepest trench this is 11,000 524 meters. So, which is more challenging going up Mount Everest or diving deep down in the the name of this trench is Mindanao I think. This is uh, Mindanao trench. So, this is in the Pacific Ocean. Hmm. Now, coming back to this diagram, you will find the elevations in the ocean. If we start uh, that is uh, with this diagram histogram here. So, this is uh, roughly around See, actually, the I couldn't draw it properly. So after this, you have this is in kilometers, land elevations.
Now, here you will find between 4 and 5 kilometers you have the maximum percentage of the uh, earth. So, here I am just do not drawing the full diagram, this is it will take a lot of time. So, here you will get is 4 to 5 kilometers. So, 22 percent of the earth is covered at the ocean by 4 to 5 kilometers depth, whereas in the land you will find um, the maximum coverage is 20 percent. Twenty percent of the earth is covered by land elevations from one to two kilometers. So this is the striking difference. So that means if you do any ocean activity or ocean engineering activity, you have to think about four to five kilometers depth. Whereas most of the land you will find land elevations will occurred between 1 and 2 kilometers of distance from the sea level. So, this is the reality. Now, coming to the ocean floor, I told you that ocean floor is never flat and stable. So, here is a diagram you will find. Of course, the scales are on the horizontal scale is larger in the vertical scale or rather the vertical scale is larger. Maybe let me draw the figure. Now, if you take a cross section of the seabed, you will find you are going to the sea front that is <coughs> the land slopes towards the beach. So, this is called a shelf. No, slope is 1 is to 500. That is, if you go 500 meters along the slope, the depression is 1 meter. You go down by 1 meter. So, that is called a slope. Now, here actually the land is modified by sea action. So, this region is called shore. So, I will give you the de detailed uh, description, you just see the profile. So, this is your continental shelf, slope 1 is to 500, where most of your oil drilling activity is taking place. Now, after this you will find the slope to increase. and the increase is very, very large. There is a steep increase in the slope and this is 1 is to slope is 1 is to 20. So, obviously, here you cannot build any offshore structure. So, offshore structures if you want to build, it has to be around near the coast for fixed structures that is in the continental shelf having slope of 1 is to 500. Now, in this 1 is to 20 slope what is happening? So, there will be more mud slides in this region because of instability of the ocean floor. So, slope is 1 is to 20. Now, after this if you go right towards the bottom there will be this is called a rise where the slope sort of decreases. 
from 1 is to 20. Slope area. Like with the 1 is to 20, huh. uh, the place where the slope is very high, 1 is to 20. Right? It is called a slope. Hmm. The, uh, prior to that, it is called a shelf. So, this region that I have drawn, that is, this one is the shelf, or you can, or you can say that this is a continental shelf. And after the slope, suddenly, because this is this corner region is there is a large amount of wave and current, particularly wave activity is enormous here. So, after this you have a continental slope, the average slope that I have given is 1 is to 20 and then again there is a rise in the slope or sorry, uh, uh, there is a decrease in the slope and this is called a continental rise. Oh. And after that, you have a flat region. <coughs> so, this is your ocean floor. This is called a floor. Now, suddenly you will find a mid ocean ridge coming like this of on the ocean floor. So, the bottom of the ocean is never flat, it is having a profile of course, the vertical dimensions have been exaggerated, the horizontal and flat portion. So, this, this is called a mid ocean ridge. So, what is happening? The mid ocean ridge is actually you will find it is separating two water bodies. this is your trench. <coughs> now, what is this? This is called an island. So, that means your water surface is somewhere here. So, this is your uh, ocean floor profile. So, that means you can see uh, near the coast. So, these are your land mass, this is your land and this is your water body. So, that means there is restriction on the circulation of water. So, deep ocean currents are barrier, we will face a barrier at a ridge and a sea mount. Uh, sea mounts are relatively smaller in height but your mid ocean ridge like the one you have in the Atlantic that is your, uh, there is a particular name for that is a huge ridge which is bisecting your Atlantic ocean. So, this is called a ocean basin. Just like you have your wash basin, you have ocean basin where a large mass of the water is circulating and mid ocean ridges and sea mounts are acting as barriers to the current. So, this is uh, the bottom profile and for definition you can write shore, what is the definition of a shore?
land mass close to sea modified by sea action that is the definition of a shore and shore and beach more or less similar nomenclature now beach you write extent of shore from what which portion you call beach extent of shore from highest to lowest tide so that means uh, at the beach or shore that is they are more influenced by tide and the other portion the other in the diagram i have told you that is where there is a change in the slope that is because of wave action so primarily you find that the sh shore beach they are modified by tide tidal variations and wave actions so these are the primary dynamical influences to your coastline and next you have the continental shelf now here you will find most of the fixed offshore structures located in the continental shelf this is seaward from shore average slope you write 1 is to 500 now after the continental shelf you have continental slope the continental word has been given because it is nearer to your land land mass of the continent so that is called continental slope you see you see simply remember the average slope so this extends from shelf edge so what is the shelf edge shelf edge to deep sea basin so average slope is 1 is to 20 average slope is 1 is to 20 so in this diagram i have already marked what is your basin so this is your the deep sea basin and this point is called a shelf edge this is your the edge of the table so that is a shelf edge and deeper down you have the ocean basin now this height average you can write uh, the maximum you can more or less it will be around say so 0 um, 0 meters sea level so this can be as high as 6000 meters i am not talking about the mindanao trench but in average 
depth of the ocean basin is around 6 kilometers. So, that means any floating platform you design, if you want to lift oil from the ocean basin, so you have to design your conductor pipe or marine riser, you have a length of more than 6 kilometers. 6 kilometers will be acted upon by all your wave action, current and your ocean floor dynamics. So, this is the definition continental slope. Now, next you have uh, mid ocean ridge. Now, mid ocean ridge by definition runs central at the center of runs center of the ocean. So, what does it do? A mid ocean ridge bisects bisects ocean basin. So, it basically divides a large ocean basin into two parts. You have the mid Atlantic ridge that is in the near the Aleutian Islands. So, it is a huge ridge bisecting the Atlantic Ocean. So, this is called a mid ocean And next you have sea mounts. Sea mounts you can see in the diagram are small mountains in the ocean. Now your mid ocean ridge actually the length is quite large rather than a sea mount. Sea mount you will find it is more local, in a particular place you will find a certain suddenly there is an elevation, but a mid ocean ridge is more or less like a wall separating basins. So, this you have to be careful when you are studying the nature of the ocean currents. Now, seals and ridges are more or less the same. Seals are nothing but ridges, which I have already defined. The next is your trench. Now, I think one lecture is probably over. So, what is the definition of a trench? It is the deepest feature of the ocean floor. So, how do you define a trench? So, trench is defined as very deep and narrow. So, in the diagram, the trench that I have drawn, you will find that, of course, the dimensions are this uh, breadth is very small compared to the depth. So, you would not have much maneuvering space in this region. If you go down by means of a ROV, you the deepest trench, you will find you are not having maneuvering space and you can get stuck. 
So, this is the end of this I think uh, your description of the oceans.